I'm Kelsey McLaughlin. I'm a pathologist with the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, and today we're going to talk about beech leaf disease. So the first thing I wanted to touch on is just the importance of beech trees. Um, beech are a really important wildlife species. They produce nuts that a lot of species rely on to get through the winter. Um, some animals use cavities in beech trees for shelter. And they also just make up a, a lot of forest habitat in New York State. Um, it is the predominant forest type in New York is, is maple beech birch, um, which makes up 53% of New York State's forests. And so there are a lot of trees here in New York State that are at risk from this disease. So um, beech leaf disease only affects beech trees. Um, so the first step, if you're looking for the disease, is to identify a beech tree. Um, I like to start with the bark because that's usually the thing that's, that's closest and most easily visible. Um, so usually the trees have a smooth gray bark, like the picture on the right. It is very smooth, almost like a piece of paper, no real ridges. Um, there are sometimes these circles where previous branches were, um, but overall it's, it's very smooth, a very clear gray uh, bark. I say usually because um, I, I say it looks like a piece of paper. Sometimes people feel the urge to write on that piece of paper. Um, carving their initials or things like that into the bark, like the picture on the left. Or there is another disease called beech bark disease, uh, which impacts beech and can cause cankering, like the picture in the center. So whenever you've identified a tree with bark that looks like beech, uh, I usually look for the leaves next. The leaves are ovate, which just means they're oval shaped. Um, a lot of leaves of trees in New York State are ovate. Um, so the really good trick that I like to use is that every vein ends in a tooth and every tooth is associated with a vein. Um, and we can see more about that in a second. Um, another thing is that the leaves aren't hairy or sandpapery. Some of the other trees that have ovate leaves, if you grab onto the leaf, you'll feel a little bit of texture. Um, beech leaves just feel like a leaf. And then also beech trees usually aren't alone. Um, especially in a forested setting, they will root sprout. So where you see one beech tree, you'll usually see 10 or 20 or even a couple hundred. So here are two leaves, both are ovate. Um, on the left, we have Eastern hop hornbeam and on the right, we have American beech. Um, so if you see each of these arrows are pointing to a tooth and then each of the lines are a vein. So with the Eastern hop hornbeam, we can see that there are four teeth in between these two veins. So not every tooth is associated with a vein. On the American beech, you can clearly see that each vein ends exactly in one tooth. So it's a very clear, um, very distinct relationship. The only other lookalike tree that you might see that has the similar one vein with one tooth um, type of pattern is the American chestnut. Um, but those trees, uh, it's, it's less of an oval shaped leaf, it's more elongate. So a little bit of history on beech leaf disease. Uh, it was first found in Ohio in 2012, and since then it's spread across the Northeast into more than 70 counties. Uh, it affects various species of beech, including our Native American beech, as well as some other species that are planted in uh, urban settings or arboretums. Um, and it is currently in New York State and continuing to expand from both the West, uh, the Southeast, and we also have some locations in central New York as well. Since this disease was just found in 2012, there's a lot that we don't know. Um, a lot of people are researching uh, universities, arborists, uh, foresters, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. Um, what we found so far is that it's associated with a nematode, uh, which is called Lydilanchus crinate macinae. Um, this is what's used in IMAP. So whenever you want to report beech leaf disease, you search for the beech leaf disease nematode or Lydilanchus, uh, and it'll pop up. This is likely not the only cause this nematode, um, as these nematodes have been found in leaves that don't have symptoms. And you can see some pictures from Lynn Carter's paper here of what a nematode looks like. It's basically a, a microscopic worm. So the symptoms of beech leaf disease look a little bit different depending on how severe the infestation is. But overall, um, we've had really good success with the public uh, identifying this disease correctly. Out of all the IMAP look, records that I've looked at, we've only had one not be beech leaf disease. So this is something that people are really good at uh, recognizing and reporting well. 
So the big symptom is that there's striping on the leaves, which is most visible from the underside, and it really helps if you hold leaves up to the light. This will make those stripes kind of um, pop. Uh, they look darkened. They may be thickened. And then some infested leaves only, or some infested trees, I'm sorry, only have a few leaves that show symptoms. So you need to search really carefully throughout the canopy. This is particularly common in new areas. So if you're in a new county that's just found this year, um, or if you're in an area where you don't know if there's beech leaf disease, you need to make sure you're really carefully checking the trees. Um, I've found trees that are infested where it's only four leaves that'll be infested out of the entire tree. Um, so you have to really kind of very carefully search. So why hold leaves up to the light? Um, the picture on the left, these are two leaves I was surveying in a stand where I knew there was beech leaf disease. I looked at these two leaves just looking towards the ground. Something didn't feel quite right, but I wasn't seeing those characteristic dark stripes. Uh, I took the same two leaves and I held them up to the light. And you can clearly see those dark stripes just absolutely pop out. So the same two leaves just from two different perspectives. So whenever you're submitting reports, we ask that you take pictures from the underside of the leaf. Uh, and if you can have them backlit as well, that really helps us um, so that I can see those dark stripes and go, yep, that's beech leaf disease. Um, so this is a little bit of an interactive activity. Um, we're going to ask if you can spot an early infestation. This first one is easy. My surveyors have been well trained to kind of frame uh, their pictures appropriately. So if you see just in the center of this picture, um, there are three or four leaves that have symptoms. Uh, and Mitch, I think if you hit the next, a circle should pop up. There we go. Uh, and then if we go to something a little bit harder, like this next picture, um, there's actually a few different areas of this picture that have symptoms. Um, they're just a little bit harder to spot. Yep, there's one. And then all the way in the top right, there should be one. Yep. So there's actually a few different pictures of this. Uh, a few different areas of this picture where you can see beech leaf disease symptoms. What I want you to really notice looking at these pictures is that 95% of the leaves in these pictures look absolutely fine. When you're looking for an early infestation, you have to be really thorough and you really are just looking for a few leaves out of many that look perfectly healthy. So in heavier symptoms, um, heavily infested leaves are shrunken, curled, and leathery in texture. If you grab onto it, it doesn't even really feel like a leaf. It does just feel like a piece of leather. Um, beach leaf disease can cause defoliation, like the picture on the right from Letchworth State Park. Uh, and then usually these symptoms aren't alone. There are more lightly infested leaves uh, or branches either on the tree that's experiencing defoliation or on nearby trees. So if you're seeing a beech tree that's defoliated, you can check out some trees around it uh, and see if you see symptoms there. So I just wanna quickly go over some lookalikes. Like I said, beech leaf disease is usually identified pretty well, but there are a couple things that look like it out on the landscape. And the most common one that we get is Arrhenium gall. Um, this is caused by an insect and you can see um, it causes kind of patchy discoloration either on the top or on the underside of the leaves. Um, the big thing that we can use to kind of distinguish this from beech leaf disease is that Arrhenium galls look kind of more like spots or little patches versus beech leaf disease causes those distinct stripes. So if you know the difference between spots and stripes, you know the difference between erinium and beech leaf disease. Uh, another lookalike is aphid damage. Um, and this one, this one has tripped me up in the woods a few times, um, but the big thing that you can see, you see that discoloration, you see that it does make kind of stripes like beech leaf disease. Um, but if you hold the leaves up to the right, hold the leaves up to the light, I'm sorry, like in the picture on the right, um, you'll see it doesn't have that dark striping. And then usually whenever you flip the leaves over, you'll see that really tightly curled edge, which is a sign of the leaf rolling aphid. And then the final lookalike that we have today is anthracnose. Uh, this is a fungal disease that affects beech and it can cause kind of brown spots um, or in some cases more extensive browning like the picture on the right. Um, this one, Again, does it, it can look like beech leaf disease from a distance, but whenever you get up close, you see there's not that striping. Um, it can look like severe beech leaf disease, but you know that it doesn't have that same leathery texture. Um, and so there's a couple different ways that you can kind of tell the difference between this 
and beech leaf disease. And all of these are on our beech leaf disease webpage, which I will put a link to in the chat if you want to look at more lookalikes. So uh, as far as the distribution, you can see the map on the right I've already had up when I was talking about the history, kind of showing um, where it came out of Ohio. Um, in New York State in 2018, we first discovered it in New York. We had one new county in Chautauqua. Uh, in 2019, we had five new counties. Um, it was kind of a surprise that we found it in Suffolk County, Westchester, and Rockland counties in the southeastern part of the state, uh, which represented a huge jump for this disease. Uh, in 2020, we had six new counties. And then in 2021, we have seven new counties and counting. Um, this includes areas in central New York. We're continuing to see expansions in the southeastern part of the state as well. Um, and so we really need more eyes um, kind of out looking for this disease to help us confirm uh, where it is. Management and prevention. Um, I, I wish I had better news here. The disease is so new that um, we haven't really caught up to it with ways to treat it or prevent it yet. Um, we don't even really know the full cause. So, you know, it's, it's trying to stop something that we don't fully understand. Um, as far as kind of preventing spread, uh, we at Forest Health treat our boots and tools with a 10% bleach solution to prevent spread of nematodes. Um, we also try to avoid moving soil or leaf matter on our boots, um, just hitting them with a boot brush quick before we leave a site. Um, we also recommend that people don't move firewood or leaf matter uh, if you're disposing of a tree with beech leaf disease. Uh, we ask that you just kind of take it to a landfill um, and make sure that all the, the leaves are properly disposed of as well. Uh, pictures are really crucial in identifying this disease, and we need really good quality pictures to confirm beech leaf disease presence. Um, since you're kind of taking pictures up into the canopy sometimes, low light and blurriness are common issues. Uh, we ask that people take pictures from the underside of affected leaves. Um, you can sometimes identify beech leaf disease from the top, um, but it's so much easier if you can take it the underside of the leaf, hold it up to the light, and I can clearly see those stripes. It makes it a lot easier on my end, um, for sure. And I did just want to say, you can survey for this disease all year. Um, the leaves will continue to have that striping pattern. Uh, as long as the leaves are present, even whenever the leaves fall to the ground, they'll still have a striping pattern. Um, so you can survey for this uh, any time of year. So the last slide is just some resources. Like I said, I will put the link for the beech leaf disease webpage in the chat. Um, but this has a lot more information on um, where we're looking, um, our control efforts, how to report, uh, and also what you can do to help. And then, like I said, it does have an extensive list of lookalikes as well. And then there's also the DEC Forest Health Information Line. If you have any other questions about beech leaf disease or other forest health pests, feel free to email us or give us a call. And I think that's my time. Um, any questions you want to answer out loud, Kelsey? Um, so I did have a good question. Does beech leaf disease affect the bark? Um, it's beech leaf disease, so it really only impacts the leaves that we know of at this time. Um, the bark just stays the same. Beech bark disease does affect the, the bark, but that's a, a different disease complex. Um, and then also I had somebody asking about uh, Staten Island or specific locations in New York. Um, in general, for beech leaf disease, we have a lot of IMAP reports in Western New York uh, and a lot of IMAP reports in the lower Hudson. Um, but, you know, central New York, uh, up into the Adirondacks, um, Staten Island, parts of New York City, um, even those not detected records would be really great just to have those kind of eyes out looking for the disease for sure.